What is the best mouse for Hans of Iron 4? For Civilization, Stellaris, Europe Universalis, Crusader Kings, and all the other strategy games to like them. Do you even need a high-end gaming mouse for that? Or should you stick with a cheap one and save money for other things? There is a lot of content on the internet about choosing the best mouse for FPS or for MMOs. But what about strategy games? What about us? Well, wonder no longer. I gotcha. I went out, got 10 wireless gaming mice and tested them all out for you. Hello everyone, I am Torior and today we're going to talk about mice. This video is going to be fairly long, I will be reviewing 10 different mice in it. So if you're only interested in a specific model, there will be timestamps down in the description. Alright, let's get to it. So what do we have here? I tried out 10 gaming mice from medium to high end, all wireless, because that's my preference. They're ranging from around $50 to around $150. Razer Viper Ultimate, thank you Razer for sending this one to me for review. This video is of course not sponsored and all opinions are my own, but this mouse was not available in my country when I started making this video. So Razer sent me one. In retrospect, I probably should have asked all the manufacturers to send me one rather than spend my own money on them, because all this together was like a thousand dollars. But hey, everybody is wise in hindsight. So Razer Viper Ultimate, Logitech G Pro Wireless, Asus ROG Gladius 2, MSI Clutch GM70, Steel Series Rival 650, Razer Mamba Wireless, Logitech G305, Corsair Harpoon, and the Razer Ethris. And the ones in the back, yeah, just ignore those. I was gonna do comparisons, but the video would be too long. But wait, Torior, you said 10 mice and I see 9. Well, yeah, all of this was started when my previous gaming mouse, this one, died. And I started with the G502, which came highly recommended. But unfortunately, I only had the idea to make this video after I already returned the G502. So I don't have any footage of it. But I have tested it, so I'll also talk about it later. Again, if you want to skip to a test of any of these mice, you can go ahead and use a timestamp. Now, why would we need a gaming mouse at all? It's not like those games are fast-paced, usually. Well, there are several reasons. Gaming mice have better latency. Now, the time between moving the mouse and seeing the effect on screen can be a problem for wireless mice. You can see a delay. But with modern gaming mice, it is not noticeable for me. The clicks and the sensors of the mice are usually more precise. The sensors have high resolution and they send information to the computer like every millisecond or two. Reprogrammable buttons can let you, for example, pause your game with the mouse and DPI switching on the fly can also be quite helpful. I consider all these features to be quite useful and the reason why, in my opinion, if you have the money, you should get a gaming mouse. But which one? We're going to be looking at the overall build quality, weight, clicks, wheel, sensor operation, DPI, latency comfort, how well it actually performs in-game, and price to performance. In addition to build quality and in-game tests, I'm also going to be testing them on three different surfaces. First up is this semi-glossy pine wood desk that my father made for me like 20 years ago. The surface is not perfectly smooth because it's real wood and also it's semi-glossy which can be a problem for some sensors. Then I have this soft steel division mousepad I got at Paradox Con two years ago and finally this. This is my favorite mousepad. It has a gel wrist rest that helps with hand fatigue quite a lot. The surface is hard and actually quite glossy, which can also be a problem for some sensors. If a mouse can perform well on all of these, Great, let's go cheapest to most expensive. This is the Razer Atheris, a small, cheap gaming mouse. The price on Amazon is $50, currently discounted to $40. Of course, I am in Poland, so I paid closer to $60 for it. Rubberized sides, not sure how durable that will be. And the top is removable to reveal two AA batteries inside. Now, I'm not sure why they did that. They easily could have done it with just one battery, and then it wouldn't be so heavy and unbalanced, because this mouse is extremely heavy for its small size. It is very small, so I can only grip it like this. I know all these grips have their names, but I always get them confused, so I'm just gonna show you. The clicks require quite a bit of force, and they are rather loud. The DPI button switches between five modes, which is nice. And the wheel performs fairly well, so do the side buttons. Not great, but good enough. It has a 7200 dpi sensor, which is sufficient, but it is uh, the weakest of the bunch. It tracks well enough on the glossy desk, better on the hard pad. On the soft pad it encounters a bit more resistance, but it's not really a problem. As for overall precision and performance, the clicks require a bit too much force to actuate in my opinion, which introduces a bit of a delay between me initially starting to press the button and the button finally pressing. It is a tiny delay, but it impacts its precision a little bit. Overall it is good enough. And that is my overall impression of the Razer Atheris. It is 
Good enough, but nothing special. Price to performance. The performance of this mouse is adequate. It's good enough. It's nothing special. Not super comfortable, not super nice to use, not super precise, but good enough. And for the price of 40 to 60 dollars, depending on where you are, that's not definitely a bad choice, but I can't really recommend it. I would only recommend the Razer Etheris to you if you have small hands and have a hard time finding the mouse for you. So, overall verdict? Small hands? Try this out. Otherwise, don't really bother. Oh, also it is ambidextrous, so suitable for left-handed people as well. Next up we have the Logitech G305 Lightspeed. It is around $60 on Amazon and I actually paid around $60 for it myself as well. It is a fan favorite and it has a very good shape. It's fairly light, it uses a removable battery and you can replace it with a lighter one if that is a problem for you. It comes in white and black and it fits my hand very comfortably. It is low towards the front and tall towards the back, which is what I prefer. It has two side buttons and a DPI switching button on the top. That switches between 4dpm modes, which is enough. The wheel operation is alright, but there is one big problem with this mouse. The clicks are extremely loud. Just listen to this. Now perhaps you like loud clicks, and that's not a problem for you, but for me that pretty much disqualifies this mouse. It uses Logitech's Hero sensor, which is widely praised, although I don't really see a big difference between that and other high-end sensors, apart from what we're gonna see in a moment. It tracks pretty well on the desk. There is no additional resistance over the soft pad, and glides very nicely over it. Now it's not too light, not too heavy. Now when it comes to the gel wrist rest pad, I have encountered some issues. Let me enlarge the game screen for a moment so you can see it better. See the cursor? Jumping around. The Logitech Hero sensor doesn't do quite well with my mouse pad, which is weird because most of the other sensors work quite well with it. However, it shows that the Logitech Hero sensor is not as perfect as some would claim. After all, this is my favorite mouse pad, and I'm going to keep using it. If a mouse doesn't work with it, I will have to either change the surface here or pick a different mouse. The clicks are not only loud, they're also quite tall, so there is a tiny delay between initially starting to push on the button and it actually actuating. It introduces a bit of a delay making your mouse less precise. Now I also encountered one issue with this mouse. I often accidentally press the right mouse button on it. I think, I'm not sure I don't have the equipment to measure that, but I think um, the force required to activate the left mouse button is greater. So if I just lay my fingers on the buttons to rest, as I sometimes do, the left one requires more force and there's no problem with it. But the right one requires less force and I accidentally click it quite a lot. Now it would be nice if they required the same force. This could just be an impression of mine, I might be wrong on this, but that's how I see it. All in all, the Logitech G305 is a good mouse that I cannot recommend. Unless you like loud clicks, but they're really obnoxiously loud. If that is not an issue for you, definitely try out the G305. It's comfortable, tracks well on many surfaces, though not all of them, has good latency and overall build quality. The clicks disqualify it for me, but perhaps you like them like this. I also forgot to mention the sensor is 12,000 dpi, but in my personal opinion, over 10,000 it doesn't really matter. Next up we have the Corsair Harpoon RGB Wireless. Yes, it's a long name. It is around $50 in the US, but I paid $65 for it in Poland. It's medium-sized, not too big, and fairly light. It has a rechargeable battery built in. Unlike the two previous mice, it is not ambidextrous. It has a crease for your thumb over here. The build quality feels very good, actually better than the previous two. And it is the first one to have some RGB lighting, if you are into that sort of thing. The clicks actuate very nicely and are not too loud. The side buttons are positioned so that you wouldn't accidentally press it, and they also feel pretty good. Not the best, but pretty good. The wheel also has a nice soft feel to it, although pressing the middle button can sometimes be slightly difficult to do without also moving the wheel. The DPA button switches between five modes that are displayed with different colors. 
It fits my hand in a variety of grips. I can grab it like this for long-term comfort, or I can grab it like this for greater precision if I need that. Again, I know these grips have names, I always confuse them. Both sides are rubberized. They feel good, not sure how durable that'll be. Generally speaking, I quite like the shape. I would have liked it a bit more if it was ambidextrous and perhaps a little bit lower. Actually, I found this mouse to be very precise, much more precise than the G305, at least for me, because there is no delay on the click. The click is short, it doesn't require too much force, so there isn't a delay between me starting to press it and it actuate. Also, the latency is very good, I could not notice a delay. It tracks well on all surfaces, and the resistance on the soft pad is slightly higher than on the hard one, but not to a point where it would be a problem to anyone, or even an inconvenience. As for the hard pad with uh, the wrist rest that defeated the Logitech Hero sensor, I've had no issues here. It tracks very well and it is fairly comfortable. To the point that I'm actually considering keeping this mouse even if I choose another one. All in all, it is very pleasant to use and after a while you barely notice it. The experience with the Corsa Harpoon is pretty much seamless, it's doing its job very well and it is pleasant to use. It is medium weight. Also, I am pretty confident in the durability of this mouse because I have never had any trouble with a Corsa product before. Of course, that's just my unique experience. It also looks quite nice and is the cheapest one to offer RGB out of the bunch. The 10,000 DPI sensor is more than enough for strategy games, you don't really need more than that in my opinion. With the price tag of 50 to $65 depending on where you are, this is amazing value in my opinion, and it has my wholehearted recommendation. Next up we have the Razer Mamba Wireless. It's a very popular mouse and it has been for a long time, but it is mostly popular for FPS games. How does it measure up in strategy? Amazon listing price is $100, discounted to $87 right when I'm making this video. I paid the equivalent of $92 for it in Poland. The build quality is pretty good and the mouse feels very nice in your hand. It is not ambidextrous and the shape is more suited to FPS than strategy. But let's test it. It's relatively heavy, but not to the point where that would be a problem. The clicks are short and actuate precisely, although they are a bit louder than I would have preferred. Side buttons are kind of hidden inside uh, the chassis of the mouse, so you won't accidentally press them. They're also quite convenient, feel and sound quite good. The wheel is pretty loud in my opinion, and the wheel click doesn't feel too good. Also, it has a sort of a metallic sound. I'm not sure if that will attract in the microphone. Listen to that. A very high metallic sound when you press the wheel. I don't like that. It features two DPA buttons, which I prefer to a cycling one, so that's nice. And the rubberized grips. Hopefully they will not peel off in time. Now it's the second mouse we have from Razer, so let's compare it to the Etheris. Well, it's a very different mouse, but the build quality feels much better on the Mamba. It is also more pleasant to the touch. It is surprisingly comfortable if I grip it like this. It doesn't offer much precision, so it's not suitable for strategy games, but for FPS that's quite great. It's also comfortable if I grip it like this, although my fingers are a bit wider than I would like them to be. And finally for this grip, I think it's called Claw, I'm not sure, um, which I use for more precise tasks. It is a bit too wide and too tall for it, which is a bit of a problem when I'm aiming for precision. Now let's check it in game. The clicks feel nice and it is quite precise, although the fact that I cannot use this grip makes it overall less precise for me. It works very nicely on the wood desk, it's also fairly silent on it. Also works nice on the soft pad, no extra resistance from the mouse feet and so on, and tracks great on that too. As for my gel wrist rest pad, it also tracks very well on it, there are no problems with precision. Actually with the wrist rest it is even more comfortable, might be one of the most comfortable mice I've tested, but only in this sort of grip. Also tried them in Doom that I occasionally play to unwind casually, and this is probably the most comfortable of all of them in that use. The buttons are not too tall and don't require too much force to press, also didn't find myself accidentally pressing any. So overall impression, the Razer Mamba is a very good, very comfortable mouse. The clicks are a bit too loud in my opinion and the wheel could be much better. As for the shape, if you use this kind of grip it can be problematic because it's a bit too big, but if you always grip your mouse like this, it is actually quite comfortable. At the price point of around $90 to $100, I can only recommend this if you never use this sort of grip. 
because it's a bit too big for it. Otherwise though, it is one of the most comfortable mice um, I've tested today. Responsive, no noticeable latency, quite long battery life, all in all, a very good product. It also features a 16,000 dpi sensor, but as I said, in my opinion, over 10,000, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. I would rate this as really quite good. Next up, we have the Steel Series Rival 650. Lots of RGB on this one, and with this mouse, we are getting into some gimmicks territory. Now, I thought I would love the Steel Series Rival 650. It sits quite comfortably in this sort of grip, and I do like the materials at the top. The buttons are slightly rubberized, which feels nice, and its profile fits quite well in my hand. It is not ambidextrous, but still, it fits quite nicely in this sort of grip. On Amazon, it's listed $420, discounted to $93 right now. In Poland, I paid around $112 for it. The sides are partially rubberized for better grip, and it does have a pretty peculiar design because you can actually take the sides off. They are magnetic. And when you do that, it reveals slots in which you can put some extra weight, if you are into that sort of thing. Now, I would not do that because I prefer lighter mice. But theoretically, if you want to, you can use it like this. And it's pretty comfortable. You can grip it quite nicely, but you lose your side buttons. But you end up with a mouse that kind of looks like a spaceship, if you do that. The sides are held on by magnets, but they actually fit in very well, and they will not accidentally come off. You have to apply quite a bit of force to remove them. So, how is the Steel Series Rival 650? It fits quite well in this sort of grip, but again, is a bit big for this kind of grip. The buttons are not too loud and don't require too much force to actuate. However, they have a pretty long travel distance. Wheel feels very good to operate and it's quiet. Middle mouse button is just all right. As for the sign buttons, they are out of the way. You will not accidentally press them and you have an extra one if you want it. They are absolutely all right, although nothing too special. You also have a DPI switching button, but it is an unpleasant surprise to me. It only switches between two DPI modes. Two is way too few for me. I need four or five so that I can use it in different games that have different sensitivities or different resolutions. There is one more issue with the mouse that I found very annoying. See, most of the others um, have an automatic sleep mode. They go into it when not used and then when you start moving them around the sensor picks it up and the mouse activates. Not this one. When it goes into sleep mode you actually have to push a button to activate it, which means it's more effort to wake it up and it takes longer. Also, the left click, even though it's not too loud, seems to have a metallic undertone in the sound that I don't particularly like. But maybe I'm just imagining things. And the mouse has no problem tracking on the wooded desk, and it is fairly precise. However, the left mouse button has a fairly long travel distance when you click it, which introduces a sort of a delay, just like in DG305, making it a bit less precise. Let's see. Tracking to just click different provinces but I end up dragging uh, a selection box for a moment. That's because of how uh, the left click works. Too long travel distance takes too long to uh, release after I click it. Of course, you might say that I'm doing it wrong, but uh, the mouse has to fit me, not the other way around. It can work in this grip for precision, but it's not the most comfortable in it. Now I ran into a big problem with my favorite mouse pad. Look at the cursor. It's not moving at all. I'm not sure, maybe it's a lift of distance thing, I don't know. I don't get into these things quite a lot. I expect my mouse to work. And this just doesn't. It doesn't work on this mouse pad. Maybe you can calibrate it, but again, I don't want to have to calibrate it. Back on the desk, works fine. Well, this mouse pad doesn't work at all. Desk, mouse pad. Let's try the soft one too. It tracks quite well on the soft mouse pad, but it does get some extra resistance. Not enough to really be a problem, but enough to be noticed. I'm not sure if it's the latency or uh, the long clicks, but there is a bit of a delay between me starting to push the button and it actually actuating, and there's also a bit of a delay between me releasing the button and that actuating, which means I sometimes end up dragging selection boxes even if I don't want to. Ultimately, at the price point of over $100, I'm expecting maybe not perfection, but near perfection. And the SteelSeries Rival 650 is not that. In my opinion, it is a flawed mouse and I cannot 
recommend it to you. Unless, of course, you want to take the sides off and just use it like this, just for the cool look. I can understand and appreciate that. Next up, we have the MSI Clutch GM70. It is a weird mouse. It's extremely large and heavy, really, really heavy. It is also highly modular. See these wings on the sides, they come off. And here we can see one of the reasons why it is so heavy. This is a metal frame. This is easily the heaviest mouse I have ever used. Just listen to it slide over the desk. Lots of RGB, looks nice, but that's not all that comes off. You also have the backplate here. It comes with two different backplates and four wings that you can mix and match however you want. Now you probably won't see it, but these backplates have a different curve. They change the overall shape of the mouse. Maybe you'll see it if I hold it sideways. See, with this backplate, the hump of the mouse is located right in front of the shiny MSI logo. If I replace it with the other one, which is not too difficult, they are also magnetic, everything is magnetic about this mouse, which is also why it's so heavy. Now, the other backplate moves the hump a little bit back, so the hump actually is at the beginning of the MSI logo, it's just a slight difference, but it does feel differently, so we can customize it to fit your hand better. As for the wings, you just snap them on, one at a time, Here's some wings. These are even bigger. The mouse is actually pretty comfortable, but it's so heavy that you can't help but feel it all the time. And if you want to go and lift it, well, good luck with that. I like the idea of the modular design that lets you make it fit your hand better, uh, but the execution is not that great. It did not need the whole metal frame thing. It makes it almost unusable. Oh, speaking of the wings, you can just, you know, mix them differently if you want. No problem with that. And make it asymmetrical however you like it. Or just use one wing or none of them, it also works. Still, they don't sit very strong on the magnets. See, that's enough to pull it off. You can easily snap it back on, but in contrast, the Steel Series Rival um, has those magnetic parts sitting pretty tight. I have to really apply a bit of force to pull them off. And these can just snap off. If you drop the mouse, it'll be all over the place. Although, with the weight of that, if you drop the mouse, you might put a hole in the floor. Especially with the whole metal frame thing. If you drop this on your toe, you might break it. It has one feature that makes it an interesting choice. You can play around with the magnetic parts a lot. Put them wherever. Let's add more. See? I made a spaceship! Not sure if that's what you need in the mouse. The buttons feel pretty alright. It is ambidextrous, it has the forward and back buttons on both sides. These feel a bit too hard. The wheel operation is uh, very nice. Wheel clicks are acceptable, nothing special. It does move the wheel a little bit when you click it, usually. Here we have a DPI changing button with four presets. Amazon listed at $110, discounted to $97. I actually paid around $113 for it in Poland. While we're on the physical presentation of the mouse, I should probably mention the charging cable. Most of these mice have their own cables with their own designs, which are usually quite inconvenient, because if you just made the opening bigger, I could just use my phone charger or whatever. Here's the charging cable, right? Can the camera focus on it? Probably not. Anyway, you put it into the slot over here, and it is locked in. In order to release it, I have to pull this little lever here. Pull it and nothing happens. So I have to both pull this and pull the cable itself really hard, like really hard, for it to get out. Not a good design in my opinion. This cable is not going to last very long if I have to pull it that hard to get it out of the mouse every time I charge it. Regarding latency, there is a slight delay on the clicks. It's not big, but it's there. It might be due to the button being high, so I start pushing. I think that I've pushed it, but it still needs a moment to actuate. Or maybe it is a connection thing. How about surface? Well, there is a bit of an issue with this. Listen how loud it is on my desk. And also, you might notice that the cursor is not moving perfectly. See? It's not tracking very well on this part of the desk. It's not a difficult surface to track. Why is that? Well, see, if I take the wings off, it tracks much better, though it's still very loud on it. There are still some jumps, but it's a bit better than with the wings. Why is that? Well, 
I think I have to bash it on build quality. These wings, you can't see that on the camera, unfortunately, but these wings protrude a little bit further than the mouse feet actually do. So when it's sliding with the wings, it is using the mouse feet on the wings down here, the mouse foot down here, but in the front, it is not actually sliding on the soft mouse feet, it is sliding on the hard bits of plastic that are part of the wing. It also brings the whole mouse up a little bit, which messes with surface detection, I think. That is a pretty serious issue if you are using um, even a slightly uneven surface. Also, it's bloody loud. It is working all right on the soft mouse pad, no problems here with the wings. Let's take them off. No sliding problems without the wings, but I did see some skipping a moment ago. See? Now, see it? Why is that? Is that a bad sensor? Is it a connection issue? I don't know, but there is definitely an issue even on that soft mouse pad. As for my hard mouse pad, but it is also not perfect. It does have some problems on the way. I don't know, maybe I got a defective model or something. But this sensor is definitely not a good one. Even though they claim it's uh, like 18,000 DPI or whatever. I don't know, or maybe the connection is interfering with something else. I don't know, but it's the only one of these mice that has such serious problems. So seeing that one problem pretty much defeats the purpose of any further testing. Now, the tracking issues are only present sometimes. So it makes me think it might be a connection issue. Maybe something is interfering with uh, the mouse connecting to my PC. I don't know. Still, it's not something I should have to be concerned about. I am buying an expensive product. I expect it to work. So who would I recommend it to, provided these connection slash sensor issues um, can be taken care of? Mm, pretty much only the people who have hands so large that they cannot find a mouse for themselves and people that are so strong that they can't feel the weight of a mouse and all the other mice are too light for them. I don't think I would recommend it to anyone, honestly, unless you're like the mountain. <coughs> Six done, four to go. Next up, we have the ROG Gladius 2. It is a nice looking mouse with a very good build quality. The peculiar thing about it is that Amazon lists it as $110 and discounted to $105. However, I paid over $130 for it in Poland, so clearly the prices are not that good in Europe, or at least in Poland. It has a great feel to it. Unfortunately, it has the same problem that the Razer Mamba has. It is very tall and not suitable for this sort of grip. If you want to grip it like this and never switch to this one, again, I know they have names. I think it's, this is claw, right? And what's that? Is that palm or finger? I don't know, whatever. So essentially, um, doesn't work very well with this grip because of its size and shape, and especially because of the wide and tall front. So I don't think it suits uh, my style of strategy gameplay very well. It feels very similar to the Razer Mamba, and it has a similar shape. It is much more expensive though. It has a 16,000 dpi sensor and some extra features too. Rubberized sides are very nice to the touch and the side buttons are very quiet and pleasant in use. As for the main clicks, they are slightly louder than I would have liked but do not require too much force to be pushed in. And that goes for both left and right. The wheels operation is very pleasant and the middle click is quite acceptable. Here's the first problem I have with the mouse. The DPI button only switches between two modes. Slow or fast, not more. I need at least four or five modes so that I can cycle between all the options I want. Also, the slide is not perfect. It is vulnerable to any imperfections of the surface. See, this desk is very old. It's over 20 years old. I've been using it all the time. So it is not a perfectly level surface. I'm applying the same amount of force sideways to the mouse all the time. You can see that it slows down a bit, depending on what surface it hits. What else? Well, ROG has introduced an interesting feature. This mouse can be easily taken apart and you can replace the switches yourself with these. Which is nice, I would probably replace them with quieter ones because I like quiet switches. But the shape doesn't really work for me. It is not a mouse I can successfully use and I need more DPI options. The clicks are a little bit too tall for me uh, and there is a bit of a delay between my perceived click of the button and the actual click of the button. 
and it feels like it's not the problem of connection but rather of uh, the high click. Now this might be personal to me but some of these mice don't have that problem and this one kind of does. I really like the wheels operation, it is smooth and generally pleasant and the side buttons are too. I already mentioned that it tracks well on the semi-glossy desk but it is also vulnerable to any imperfections that slow it down. That's probably because its mouse feet are very hard. There is a bit of an issue with the soft pad. See, it slows the mouse down very significantly. It definitely could be smoother on a pad like this. And this is not a perfect experience here. As for my favorite hard pad, uh, the tracking is perfect on it. There is no problem like there was with some other mice. However, uh, the movement is still impeded by the friction. So essentially the mouse feet offer a little bit too much resistance, the friction is a bit too high, the mouse does not glide as nicely as I would like it to. Overall I am impressed with the build quality, but it is not a mouse for me. On this one I'm more or less neutral. I wouldn't buy it, but you might want to. The easily exchanged switches are definitely something interesting. So the verdict on that one, it is pretty much comparable to the Razer Mamba Wireless. However, it is more expensive. It's not a bad mouse, but we've seen some better choices today, so I can't honestly recommend it. Still, I am impressed with the build quality and the replaceable switches. I would definitely pick the Razer Mamba or the Corsair Harpoon over it, even if we do not include the price in the equation, and it is more expensive than them. Still, I am very interested to see what ROG does with their future mice, because the easily exchangeable switches are definitely an interesting proposition. Next up we have the G Pro Wireless, for a long time considered to be the best wireless gaming mouse there is. Now is that warranted? Kinda. It's really good. It costs $150, but I've seen it discounted to $120. It is extremely light, has very long battery life, has an ambidextrous shape, no noticeable latency on that one, has a 16,000 dpi sensor, and the battery lasts a very long time. But is it really that good? In Poland I paid around $140 for it. As I mentioned, it is ambidextrous, and it has removable side buttons. It is an interesting feature, they are magnetic, and you can just take them out and replace them with a placeholder like this. The DPI switching button is on the bottom, I don't really like that very much, I would prefer it up top. However, the buttons are of course programmable, so in addition to the forward and back button on the left, I have programmed this button here to act as my DPI switch and loaded that to the onboard memory of the mouse. As I mentioned, the buttons are magnetic and they can be easily removed and replaced. You just put your fingernail in here and there it goes. Very quick, easy and convenient. Boom, it's back in. The chassis feels very durable, it is light but it doesn't feel weak. As for the clicks, they are a bit louder than I would like them to be, but they're also very precise. The button clicks exactly when I want it to click, not a bit later like in some other models. As for the side buttons, they're pretty quiet and feel very good, actuate easily, and you won't accidentally press them. The wheel is nice and I especially like the middle mouse button press. It is very quiet, but can be felt. If only left and right clicks could be like that. I like this mouse, although the shape could be a bit better. See, it has the hump in the middle. I would prefer it to be tilted a little bit backwards. Also, it is relatively tall, and the top is not flat, but highly curved, as you can see here. I've used it for like three weeks now, and I actually experienced some pain in my hand because of the shape, because my hand has to kind of wrap around it. Still, it is a very good mouse. Let's now go into how it performs. It tracks perfectly on my desk, no problems, no skips, nothing. It also glides very easily. It doesn't slow down on any imperfections or anything like that. There is no latency that I can notice, and the click actuates exactly when I want it to actuate. It's not delayed one bit. This makes the mouse feel very, very precise, probably the most precise of all of these. I have absolutely no problem hitting the exact spot that I want to hit with the G Pro Wireless. And the battery pretty much lasts forever, I think I charged it once or twice in three weeks of use, and it is generally a very good mouse. But what about other surfaces? On the soft mouse pad it glides perfectly and also tracks perfectly. 
no problems with that whatsoever. But the Logitech Hero sensor had some trouble with my hard mouse pad. Let's have a look at that. The sensor on the G Pro Wireless is noticeably better than the sensor on the G305. Still, there are some spots on the mouse pad. Oh, have you seen that? Yeah, some spots on this mousepad that make it go bonkers. Again, that probably only affects me and a few other people in the world, so I would rather keep using my favorite mousepad. Of course, I can just put like a piece of paper over it or exchange the service for a different one, but I'd rather not do that. It has served me very well. The mouse works pretty well for all sorts of grips. It has a universal shape. All in all, this is an amazing piece of engineering, but it is not perfect. What would make it perfect? Well, I'd like the clicks to be slightly quieter. I'd like it to be less tall and have the hump a little bit towards the back compared to the G305. See, the G305 has the hump a little bit to the back and the front is a little bit lower. That is an overall better shape for me. Sadly, the super loud clicks disqualified this one from my consideration. Also, the G Pro Wireless tracks better, performs better, the clicks are more precise, it's an overall better mouse, but I would prefer the shape to be slightly different. It seems to have started a revolution in the quality of wireless gaming mice. I am glad to have tried it. Next up we have the Razer Viper Ultimate. It's a new mouse, when I was starting this video it was not even available in my country, so I had to ask Razer to send me one. Thank you very much. It is a mouse specifically designed to compete with the G Pro Wireless. It has a similar shape, although it is not as tall, which is a plus in my book. And on paper it is slightly better than the G Pro Wireless in every single thing. It has slightly better latency, slightly better battery life, it's a little bit lighter, and it comes with extra equipment. So Razer is definitely attacking the position of the G Pro Wireless as the best wireless gaming mouse. Are they successful? Well, let's find out. The listing price of the Razer Viper Ultimate is $150 for the United States, but in Europe it's actually more expensive. I think you'd have to pay like $180 to get it in Europe, so it is easily the most expensive of the bunch. As I mentioned, it is extremely light, it has good build quality, uh, the plastic is a little rough, but that's not a bad thing, and the sides are slightly rubberized. I am always wary of rubberized sides because they could come off, but these seem very solid. The side buttons are kind of hidden inside the chassis of the mouse, very similar to what we saw on the Viper. This way you don't accidentally press them when moving your thumb, but they are still available. This is an ambidextrous mouse and it has the side buttons on both sides. They are not removable as they are in the G Pro Wireless, but they are also not easy to accidentally press, so they will not be a problem. It has some RGB, but not a lot to conserve battery. The buttons have a slight curve to them and they sound pretty good. They are not too loud, but you can still feel them pressing. As for the mouse wheel, not amazing. Good enough. The DPI button is also on the bottom. You can probably reprogram it, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. I just got this one yesterday. Honestly, the wheel could be a bit better. Uh, I noticed that the Razer mice have a sort of a metallic sound uh, to the middle mouse button click. It's not really a problem. The left and the right mouse buttons are much more important. As for the side buttons, they feel very nice. I definitely like the shape of this one. It is low enough to fit my hand comfortably and not tire it out in a variety of grips. The click actuation is very quick. I don't feel a delay. However, I have a feeling like the G Pro Wireless was a little bit more precise, but it's a very small difference. I can also hit whatever target I want with this one without trouble. Oh, forgot my research. It tracks perfectly on my semi-glossy desk, even over imperfections. On the soft mouse pad it tracks perfectly and it glides very smoothly, no problem with that whatsoever. And on my gel restressed hard pad I have experienced no issues, it doesn't experience the jumping of the Logitech Hero sensor, which is nice because I would rather keep using this pad. I have been using this mouse for just one day, but I find it overall very pleasant. It is very light, maybe even a bit too light, because sometimes uh, when I click the button I accidentally move the mouse with the click, but it might be just a matter of getting used to. The shape is very good for a variety of grips for me, it is comfortable, and it does not 
make my hand hurt. How would I improve it? I would probably make the button presses a little bit shorter, but that's just my opinion. All in all, I feel like it offers slightly less precision than the G Pro Wireless, but also it is much more comfortable. Oh, also I forgot to show you the extra equipment this one comes with. And that's a charging dock. You can just pop it in here and it charges. That's extremely convenient. Much more than, you know, getting a cable and attaching it. Alright, let's move on to the next one. I have also tested the Logitech G502 wireless. I have returned it before I had the idea to make this video, but I still want to talk about it, so I'll just show you pictures from the internet. And why did I return it? I immediately knew that it was not the mouse for me. It is not ambidextrous, and the tilt of the hand was a bit too much for me. It has the free spinning mouse wheel, which actually was slightly problematic for me, because when I was moving it left and right, um, the wheel wobbled when it was not uh, pinned down, and when it was pinned down, it was very loud. Also, the hero sensor did not track very well on my favorite mouse pad, and the clicks were relatively loud. But what was the biggest problem that caused me to immediately return this mouse? You will notice that it has two buttons, right next to the left mouse click. They are meant to offer you more options, but I ended up pressing them accidentally all the time. It was very uncomfortable, and this mouse pretty much locks your fingers in place, otherwise it won't perform too well. And I prefer relaxed grips and switching from one grip to the other, so it was definitely not a good fit for me. So I cannot recommend the G502. I know it has many fans and it might be the right mouse for you, but for me it is not. Too tall, the free spinning wheel rattled when I moved it around, since it didn't track on my favorite mouse pad, and I kept accidentally pressing these two buttons. So definitely no recommendation on the G502. It costs $150. Even if you want Logitech, for the same price, or even lower, you can get the G Pro Wireless, which is a vastly superior mouse to the G502, in my opinion. So really no reason to get this one. So what is uh, the verdict? Which one of these is uh, the best wireless gaming mouse for strategy games? Well, I actually picked three winners. I feel like it's gonna be quite obvious at this point, but the top three will be the Razer Viper Ultimate, the Logitech G Pro Wireless, and the Corsair Harpoon Wireless. And each of them is the best in a different category. Honestly, for me, if these were like 9 out of 10, then this is 8.5. But these cost $150, and this cost $50. It's heavier, but not too heavy. This has a 20,000 dpi sensor, this has a 16,000 dpi sensor, and this just has 10. But that's not really noticeable unless you're a pro gamer. It is not ambidextrous. I did not notice any latency issues on it. And I did notice them on much more expensive mice. The battery holds for a very long time. I've used it for like two weeks and charged it once, I think. Granted, I used the G Pro Wireless more, but still, this was used. This is all you need for a very good gaming experience. These are three times as expensive. They are not three times as good. So in terms of price to performance, best value gaming mouse, I wholeheartedly recommend the Corsair Harpoon Wireless RGB, shorten the name please. In overall quality of the experience of using the mouse in strategy games, this is third place of just quality. It's better than all these more expensive ones, in my opinion. Just better. Not price to performance, overall just better. And this one would be there right alongside it if the clicks weren't so obnoxious. Sorry, G305. So just quality and performance, this is third place. Best value, overall winner for me. So unless you have crazy amounts of money, get this one. It's a great mouse. Now, what if you do want to spend more? Which one is better, the G Pro Wireless or the Razer Viper Ultimate? They are different, but I can't say one of them is definitely better in everything. There are significant differences between them. Now, on paper, the Razer Viper Ultimate is slightly better in absolutely everything than the G Pro Wireless. But it's not quite that simple. They are both engineering excellence, and at this level, the differences in latency and weight and battery life are pretty much cosmetic. It's not something you will notice. So for me, it comes down to two things, precision and comfort, because everything else is top notch on both of them. In my opinion, the G Pro Wireless is slightly more precise. I click exactly where and when I want to click. 
the Razer Viper Ultimate is almost as precise as the Jeep Pro Wireless, but it is much more comfortable for me. And it comes down to the fact that I will barely notice like a 10% difference in precision, but I will definitely notice a 10% difference in comfort. So I have to go with the Razer Viper Ultimate because it's more comfortable. Now I can't say this is definitely a better mouse than the Jeep Pro Wireless, but it's the first wireless mouse for a while that can actually compete with it. And for me, it's better because it's more comfortable and comfort is crucial for long game sessions like you get in grand strategy games. The G-Pro Wireless extra precise, very good experience. But after two or three hours, my hand starts to hurt. So I have to switch to the Corsair that I have on hand here. That's not something you want in your favorite mouse. Now, I did not have that problem with the Razer Viper Ultimate. Who knows, I might keep all three of these. But which one should you get? If you care about the price, get the Corsair. This is amazing value. And it's really all you need. Again, if these are 9 out of 10, this is 8.5 at one third the price. You could put that $100 into a better processor or just a few games or a few DLC for a Paradox game. Not all of them, of course. What if you don't care about the money? Or you think it's a reasonable investment because it's a tool. It's a tool you use very often. Well, it all comes down to what sort of mouse you prefer. See, the Razer is not as tall as the Logitech. For me, it's much more comfortable. The Logitech is taller. It also has those cool removable buttons. And it's very precise. So your best course of action in choosing between these two would be to go to a store or, you know, order both from a place that has a good return policy and see which fits your hand better. For me, it's the Razer because I can have a relaxed grip on it and not have my hand tire after a few hours. Still, your hand could have a different shape than mine and it might fit your hand better. So before you make a decision, you might want to at least hold it. But again, if you care about the money, get the Corsair. So my next mouse is going to be the Razer Viper Ultimate. It's great. And that's it for today. We're going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching and sticking with me through all of that. I'll go finish that Poland game now. And please let me know in the comments what you think about this kind of video. Was it helpful at all? Would you like to see more videos like this? Perhaps other components like um, a monitor or something? Or are there other mice that I should have covered, in your opinion, and haven't? Who knows, maybe I'll reach out to all the manufacturers and make a follow-up with 10 more gaming mice. Or maybe not. Please let me know what you think. Thank you very much, that is it for today, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.